Hey everyone, I'd like to discuss with you the different types of oxygen therapy for your patients with impaired gas exchange. As oxygen can be delivered through many different routes, I plan to discuss all the need to know information and nursing considerations that will include your nasal cannula, simple mask, partial rebreather, non rebreather, and venturi mask. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Consider subscribing as I upload new content on a weekly basis. In addition, be sure to download link in description for a free quiz. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. A gas exchange can be affected in the setting of respiratory or cardiac problems that results in hypoxemia, which is decreased oxygen in the blood. It can occur from an infection such as sepsis, fever, or anemia. So let's go straight into the types of oxygen. It's divided into two categories. Number one is your low oxygen delivery system, and number two is your high flow delivery system. So the low level oxygen includes a nasal cannula, simple mass, partial rebreather, and your non rebreather. Your high flow oxygen includes your high flow nasal cannula, your venturi mask, your non invasive positive pressure vent, which is your NPPV your BiPAP and your CPAP. So with your nasal cannula, the rate should be between one to six liters per minute, but normally it's max four liters per minute with a humidifier to preserve the tissue integrity. If the patient requires more than four liters per minute, they may need an alternative mode of delivery or reassessment and reevaluation of the plan of care for the patient. With the nasal cannula, you want to maintain SATs greater than 92%. However, this does not apply to your patient with a medical history of CO PD. Let's take the time and go over the FiO2 delivered. FiO2 is the fraction of inspired oxygen and gas mixture at room air, which is delivered as a percentage that equates to 21% that a patient inhales in without supplemental oxygen. So your FiO2 is delivered as a percentage of concentration of oxygen that a person inhales. So then once we add oxygen from a flow meter, it's converted to 24% FiO2, which would equate to one liter per minute. This criteria is specific for nasal cannula and you will notice that the FiO2 increases by 4% with each liter of oxygen added. So 28% of the FiO2 equates to two liters per minute and so forth as listed. Here is a key nursing point. As the nurse, you're constantly assessing and reevaluating your patient. You can gather this data through an ABG, also known as an arterial blood gas, pulse oximeter, and capnography. So your capnography measures the amount of exhaled carbon dioxide. So it'll range anywhere from 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Typically, this is your ICU patient. Moving on to simple mask. This has a mask that fits over the nose and the mouth and has holes on the side of the mask referred to as exhalation ports to allow for exhalation of air to prevent suffocation. The range of oxygen can range anywhere from 40 to 60 percent. As a minimum flow rate is 40 percent, it equals about 5 liters per minute or 55 to 60 percent would equal 8 liters per minute. This mode is delivered temporarily after surgery while in recovery or when there is a rapid change in patient's oxygenation. Here is a key point. As a RN, you want to assess for signs of respiratory distress, such as use of accessory muscles, nasal flaring, a prolonged capillary refill greater than three seconds, or subjectively, the patient may report a feeling of dyspnea, or they'll tell you they feel short of breath. Moving on to partial rebreather. This delivers six to 11 liters per minute, which is equivalent to 60 to 75% FiO2. This mask is used when people have very low levels of blood oxygen, as this delivers oxygen quickly to your blood. So the setup includes a face mask that covers the nose and mouth of the patient and is inflated with a reservoir bag that has no flaps. So the patient will rebreathe one third of exhaled tidal volume. With this, you want to always make sure the bag is inflated by adjusting the flow rate to meet the patient's oxygen demand. Also, this bag can kink and obstruct oxygen flow, so monitor and educate the patient. Another nursing key tip, be familiar with your patient's medical history. It tells you a story of what you need to look out for, such as past medical history of OSA, which is obstructive sleep apnea, COPD or previous pulmonary embolism, or maybe a recent AFib. 
So then you know they're at risk for a blood clot, which will prompt you to monitor for signs of hypoxemia. If you're looking for more content on AFib or PE, check out my videos, a link in description below. Moving on to your non rebreather, this delivers 10 to 15 liters per minute. This is a mass that covers the patient's mouth and nose with a reservoir bag with exhalation ports that have a flap over each port to prevent room air from entering that could dilute oxygen concentration. That's why it's important to make sure that ports are contained within. This allows the patient to get the amount of oxygen needed for the reservoir bag. This is the highest oxygen to be delivered from the category of low oxygen delivery system. So here is a nursing key point regarding oxygen toxicity, so important. So oxygen therapy can cause injury to the lung if the oxygen is greater than 50% for about 24 to 48 hours. The longer the duration, the worse the symptoms of crackles on auscultation, chest pain, like a productive cough and um, dyspnea. High flow nasal cannula can deliver 30 to 60 liters per minute with the combination of heat and humidity to help decrease the mucous membrane damage and is overall just better tolerated because they have prongs in their narrows and it's more comfortable for the patient. Here is a key nursing point to remember. The humidifier is a source of infection. It can harbor fungus and bacteria. This also includes your nasal cannula or mass. So be sure to change them out as needed and follow your hospital policy guidelines. Moving on to Venturi Mass. So this is a high flow oxygen device which gives an exact FiO2 ranging from 24 to 50%. This mask contains the aerosol mass. It has a flexible tubing, oxygen line that connect to the flow meter, a fixed orifice device with different colors specific to a liter flow with a clear plastic cap that attaches to the fixed orifice device as a safety guard, so important, to prevent obstruction of vents. So there are six different colors of the fixed orifice that deliver an exact amount of oxygen. The colors may vary by manufacturer, so just keep that in mind as a disclaimer, but it will be listed on there or referred to your RT. The Venturi masks are used for patients who have a hypoxic drive and need supplemental oxygen. This would include your COPD patient. Non-invasive positive pressure vent, which is your NPPV, is commonly used for the patient with COPD, hypercarbia, or an acute asthma attack or dyspnea. This machine uses positive pressure that allows the alveoli to open to prevent intubation. BiPAP, it delivers a set inspiratory with each breath in that provides a positive airway pressure. For CPAP, the goal is to expand the collapsed alveoli. This is a machine that will be commonly used for your patient that has OSA, sleep apnea. Both CPAP and BiPAP are used post-exubation to prevent re-intubation or for the patient that has COPD or atelectasis from surgery. Well, this wraps up my content on different types of oxygen, so be sure to smash that like button, share with your fellow friends, and subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.